People often ask me, Big Nerdy, how awesome is it that you now are living the toy biz dream and you're part of the toy business? And to be honest, it's pretty awesome. But there are things that I don't like about it. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the seven things, not 10, seven, seven things that really suck about owning an online toy store that I wish I knew before I started it. What's up, everybody? My name is Matt, often called Big Nerdy. Together, we are the NWO, the Nerd World Order. And this is Nerd Joic. All right, so I haven't talked too much about what I don't like about owning a store, but there's definitely some things I wish I knew coming in. Like, I knew a lot of the stuff that was gonna suck coming in, but some of it, I didn't realize just how big of an impact it was gonna have. A great example of that is blind ordering. Blind ordering is the bane of my existence. For example, here we have Spider-Man Benji. The hell is that? Or here, Star Wars Ann Arbor. Oh, that's helpful. So if you didn't know everything gets a code name, it makes it really hard when I'm trying to order because I got to try to figure out like, oh, how popular is this going to be? I don't want to under order because then I can't make money because I don't have product to sell. I don't want to over order because if I get it late, then it's not going to sell and I'm going to have to discount it to sell it. So it is a double-edged sword and it's one of the worst parts of owning a toy store. Now, occasionally the code names are clues, but that's not that often. Usually they have no rhyme or reason. Sometimes my distributors will have notes for me. Thank you, Justin. Like when he told me that Yellow 5 was Rhino, so I was able to order a bunch of them. But not all the time. Most of the time, I'm just like, oh, Yellow 8, that should be fun. The next bad thing about owning a toy store are pre-order dates. This is insanity. As I'm recording this, I just had $20,000 worth of pre-orders charged to my card that just came in. We went from nothing coming in to everything's coming in at once. I've seen a lot of you guys dealing with it too. For those of you who buy from stores who don't charge you up front like I do, it's a little bit easier. But yeah, it sucks. Now, for those of you who bought stuff from me over the last year, you're going to be getting plow, 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 all over. You're getting all sorts of packages in the mail. G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Marvel. It's pretty crazy. In the end, I have quickly learned that pre-order release dates are estimates at best. Like, they have no clue what they're doing, really, especially Hasbro. Like, for example, the Star Wars Black Series Wave 8, I just got the shipping notification that they're coming to me now. They're not supposed to be out until next May. How am I getting them? Meanwhile, I still haven't gotten my Marvel Legends Symbiote Spider-Mans, which were supposed to be out last January. What's going on? Some companies have this figured out, like Todd McFarlane's DC Multiverse line. It seems like it ships within 30 days of the date almost all the time. Like, I don't think the Hasbro distribution issue is a supply chain issue. That's a Hasbro issue. Imagine a world where toys had street dates that were treated like DVDs, where they had to be delivered that day. <sighs> it's like Midnight Madness all over again. Why can't it happen again? The next thing that really sucks is low margins. I gotta be honest, I was shocked when I found out how little you made from each figure you sell. So when I started, granted this was back when Black Series and Legends were 20 bucks a piece, my original plan was I'm gonna sell them for 20 bucks. I'm gonna sell them for the same price as Walmart and Target. And sure, I won't make quite as much, but I'll make enough that I can definitely make my money on volume. Yeah. There is a couple of dollars you make on every Marvel Legends that you sell. It is not great. Now this does pertain mostly to the licensed brands. It doesn't pertain to everything, but yeah, those margins will kill you. And you know what's ironic is with all these price increases, we see the prices go up, but the margins are going down. It's not just you guys who are getting killed by these toy companies' price increases, it's us too. And I'm pretty sure they're passing on the cost. It's not like a greed thing. I know a lot of people think it is. I honestly don't think it is. Maybe I just see the best in people, but yeah, it sucks. Margins are actually the reason I stopped carrying SH Figure Arts and Mattel. Their margins are so low that I actually lose money if I sell for the same price as Target and Walmart. Generally, I try to price my stuff about a dollar above MSRP. That accounts for like the white glove service you get dealing with an e-tailer but my god i would have to sell mattel figures for so much more than they're worth that i just said screw it i'm not carrying them it's a shame because i would love to carry the he-man figures but here we are the next thing that sucks about owning a toy store is manufacturer access i wish i knew ahead of time what toys were coming out when i actually don't have any communication with hasbro the only communication i have directly with hasbro is the stuff that i have as like a toy influencer whatever the hell you want to call that with the marketing teams where they kind of give me little bits and you know i've done interviews with them and whatnot but i would love for Hasbro to say, hey, Matt, just so you know, tomorrow there's a big release. Here's all the pictures. So I'm not scrambling and trying to find them on the internet right before they release. That's a pain in the butt. Now, credit to the Hasbro marketing department over the last year or so, they went from saying, okay, it's 11 a.m. Here are the figures that are coming out at 1 p.m., which gave me one hour to figure all this out. At least now I have 24 hours, but still, it'll be cool to be on a mailing list or something, Hasbro, if you're watching. But in all seriousness, Hasbro, which is the biggest company, is one of the best to deal with. I would say them and Four Horsemen are the two best. 
best. But like four horsemen, no one's gonna touch dealing with them. I get to deal with Jeremy. I get to deal with Chris directly. Those guys are great. If I send them an email or something, they get back to me right away. Like I couldn't ask for a better relationship with a vendor. Hasbro's pretty good too for a giant company, but then there's others. Again, I'm gonna poop on Mattel here. I emailed Mattel once and said, hey, I wanna carry your product, but the margins are so low, I can't afford it. Do you have a better vendor? And they said, we don't deal with smaller niche shops like yours. Yeah, that didn't rub me the wrong way at all. And don't get me started on Bandai. Don't even get me started. That's a topic for another video right there. I also gotta give some credit to NECA. They have some amazing people working there as well. Elizabeth, Ralph, looking at you. The next thing that I wish I knew coming into this is that there is no out of the box software for a toy store. Now, some of you might've heard of Shopify, which is the system I use, Dorkside uses it. Pretty much every store not named Big Bad Toy Store who has a custom scratch coded store uses this system. It's not made for inventory that is meant to be on there for a limited time. It's not great for pre-orders and it's not great for things like pile of loot like Big Bad Toy Store does. I know Dorkside Toys has been trying to come up with their own version of this. I'm working on my version of this. It is really hard to figure out how to do this unless you're like a professional coder and I am not. I can like bold font with my coding ability. That's about it. It makes it really hard to manage inventory and fulfillment. Luckily, I have a background in logistics. Like if I was just some Joe Schmo who started this, I don't know how it would have happened. Number six is dealing with shipping companies. Good Lord, they're terrible. I can't tell you how often I have to replace figures because UPS or FedEx damages or loses them. Then it's a whole process to get them replaced. Like seriously, I feel like UPS is trying to reenact the opening scene of Ace Ventura half the time they deliver things. Looking at you, Lee. Sorry, one of my awesome customers had to return something twice because he kept getting a damage. Like it went out perfectly, but UPS must have drop kicked it or something. It's annoying too, because Mrs. Nerdy really takes good care of the UPS drivers. Like I know the UPS and FedEx drivers who pick up here at our home. They take care of our stuff without a doubt. Seriously, out front, there's a mini fridge and a snack container for the UPS drivers. I know that it's not our drivers messing this up. The drivers who are drop kicking this stuff, come get a snack guys. Please be nice to my products. Seriously though, super prop squad to our local USPS and UPS drivers, those guys are great. But once it gets into the facility and starts going all over the country, yeah, who knows what's gonna happen. And the last thing that really surprised me about owning a toy store that kinda sucks, the risk of holding physical inventory. If you didn't know, I recently had a flood. This is not a YouTube studio. I had a YouTube studio, this ain't it. Yeah, it was flooded out and it's currently being rebuilt. If you didn't guess, I'm going with floods. Floods suck. If you wanna see how bad they suck, check out this video here that I filmed the morning of the flood and this video here where I gave an update to just kind of see my mindset and how crazy things were because it wasn't great. It was really bad for my business, but we're recovering. Also head on over to the website, make a purchase, check out the new arrivals. We've been getting some crazy stuff in early. I think you're going to be surprised. Go over there, go to the top of the website, hit new arrivals, see some of the stuff that's in stock right now. You're not going to regret it. And remember, you got to get old, but you don't have to grow up. Just be cool and stay nerdy. Later.